There is one question that every photographer has been asked, and chances are, if you've been asked it, you probably weren't sure how to respond. Now, you may have already guessed it, but it's the question of how much to charge. And whether you're experienced or you're new, this is a really tough question to answer. I don't know, Rich, how much do you charge for your photos? No idea, eh? I, don't know, I feel like at some point, it's like I should be able to charge a quite fair bit, but I still get stuck doing some stuff for free. And even just because I want to build that portfolio still, I feel like I should downplay myself and maybe only charge a little bit here and there. So I think part of this comes down to the whole issue of comparison, where you'll start to be a little bit more critical about the work you do, and then maybe you start to not like your work so much, and then you'll question, well, can I actually charge those rates that I want to charge? It's a nice little softbox you got there. Ooh, sponsored by Aperture. Not sponsored. Not a sponsored video. <laughs> That was my first time having Greek yogurt. I didn't realize how thick it was. So as much as I would love for this to be a video about pricing your photography, that topic requires a whole dedicated video in itself. Inside, when I was talking to Rich and Will, something came up and that was the idea of comparing yourself to other photographers. I think it's something that we end up doing naturally, whether we mean to or not. We see what other people post and we kind of go, oh man, I wish I could take that too. Or I wish I could do it as good as they can. Or I wish I had that new camera or that new lens or something that they have that I don't. And if you can figure out a way to overcome that and push it aside and realize that you are the only one that can take photos the way you do. Even if other people are shooting in the same location with the same gear, you're always gonna have a slightly unique perspective. So stop comparing yourself to other people. Just take photos in a way that makes you happy. And yesterday was super cloudy, but today, eight o'clock in the morning, look at this sun. And that sound, eh? That sound. That's how you know it's cold. The crunch, crunch. This is another one that's gonna get a lot of people, but clout chasing. It is extremely easy with Instagram and TikTok and all these platforms where they're numbers focused. Like how many views did you get? How many likes did you get? And if you know anything about creating online content, you kind of know that it's not always the best content that goes viral and gets the views. In fact, a lot of the times it tends to be the content that's a little bit controversial. Like maybe you said something, oh my gosh, look at my breath. Maybe you said something in your video that's maybe just a little bit incorrect or a little bit triggering or a little bit... And then you get people in your comments who say things that maybe trigger the algorithm and then people rewatch the video and all of a sudden that, that video or that photo or that piece of content you posted has gone from zero to a thousand views or a hundred thousand views. The point is sometimes we do these things that are specifically for vanity, for the metrics or for clout chasing. And big example is going and shooting photographs that are maybe a little bit not the types of photos that you're supposed to be shooting. Maybe you're shooting in an area that's, that's off limits and is closed to the public and you maybe had to you know break the law a little bit to to get those drone photos or to get into that tunnel to get to that location to get to that rooftop now i'm not immune to this i've done things that i probably shouldn't have and maybe realized after the fact when people left comments but it's one of those things that you know if you do accidentally hey like no big deal but if you're constantly doing it for those metrics then maybe you need to stop doing it Another one that will sneak up on you is doing things with the pressure to be perfect or to be different or to be unique or the pressure you have when someone else has already done something to try and do it in the same way. Maybe you saw a photo and you thought, man, I, I really want to go capture a photo like that, but I'll never do it as good as they will. Well, this comes a little bit back to the whole idea that, you know, only you can do photos in the way that you can do your photos. 
And maybe you're thinking, well, Anthony, that's easy for you to say. You already have Instagram followers and YouTube followers, and no matter what you post, people are gonna see it. Yes, that's true, but we also need to be aware of creative burnout. If we're always trying to impress someone else or impress the algorithm for that clout chasing, then we're gonna reach creative burnout really fast. Here's a tip that I like to use. So if you're someone who wants to do photography for fun, instead of forcing yourself like, hey, I have to go today and I have to shoot a photo and I have to post it today, spread those things out. So if you know that, you know, in a week from now, you're gonna be at this epic cabin with all this snow and all this stuff going on, then plan for that to be your shoot day. Plan ahead so that you're not stressing like, oh my gosh, I need some stuff last minute and I don't have anything cool that I'm doing. Whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're at a cabin, whether you're on the beach, whether you're at the top of a mountain or just walking through the city, plan that ahead. Plan, I'm gonna shoot some photos today, no pressure. I don't have to post them and whatever comes of it is the content I'm gonna have. In the last video, I didn't know what photos we were gonna shoot here. We just walked around and whatever we got, we got. And yes, some of them turned out amazing, but they're not always gonna be that amazing. So don't stress, don't push yourself to creative burnout, take it easy and enjoy the process. Okay, so we're kind of coming full circle here because not charging enough is an absolute huge one that plagues so many photographers or filmmakers or videographers. Part of the problem is that we don't value our own work. I'm thinking back to the time when I worked a full-time job. And when you're working full-time, either you're getting paid salary or you're getting paid hourly. When you're first starting out as a photographer, it can be really tempting to want to break down what you're doing into an hourly rate. And maybe you're comparing that to a salary job that you worked previously. But when you're working for yourself, you have all this extra value that you're bringing as a photographer. It's not just your time, it's your creativity, it's your equipment, your years, or maybe not years, depending on how long you've been doing it for. You have some sort of experience that you're bringing to the table. So that whole conversation about how much to charge is gonna be a whole video on its own. The point for now is that whether you're a new photographer or an old photographer and not sure what to charge, you have value. So don't sell yourself short. I know this video was a little bit different than my usual Lightroom or photography tips tutorial, but each of these things is something that my photographer friends have been struggling with. And I kind of just wanted to put them all into a single video to hammer them out and to see what your thoughts were. So if you wanna see more on any of these individual topics, go ahead, leave a comment below, hit the like button, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you do, I'll see you in the next one. All right, back to warmth. <laughs>